Ah. Um. Okay. What's up, everybody? This is an update. Popper update number 12. I know you guys have been waiting on it. Um, I'm going to show you what I've been doing and see where it takes us. Um, I guess I'll start right here. So, I was able to obtain this 99.9% .9 pure helium thanks to donations of various peoples. And uh, I cannot thank you guys enough for, uh, for donating. You know, funding these projects is very difficult for me as an individual. Um, all the money that is funded or is donated gets put into a separate bank account and is only used for these projects. And really quickly, we'll talk about donating because the donation link is really only there for individuals who are able to donate. For those of you out there looking for something that's you're on your last leg and you know you're gonna pitch it towards this to try to make something work I'm just doing everything I can to show everybody what will and will not work and try to apply it to our everyday lives but there are times where I don't come up with nothing and uh, we try our best but it's a waste of effort so just wanna let you know that do not donate only donate if you're able to some people are able to give your free will time and thinking knowledge is power that's what you really need to do so compressed helium um, I have filled this up with helium and I also was able to obtain this um, is a resistive type thermal device and it is connected sadly there over here to this controller. Um, this is busted and uh, came from work. They it's been sitting there for about a year and they finally moved it around. It was just in the way, so I'm using it for testing. Um, 77 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Um, it was at 71 when I started, so this thing does create some heat. Um, I did manage to get this cylinder. I actually rebuilt this cylinder. It was in the trash can. And uh, I was going to mount it on top. I even made the uh, mounting plates, the top and bottom mounting plates to mount it on top. And then I thought about it. Why don't I just use the top half of my cylinder as my return? At least for now, we can do that. Um, we should be able to do that anytime. But the only problem with doing that is it's possible that you could contaminate the other gases by putting pressure down on them. That's the only bad thing. But I, I can still pull this up. It still wants to pull down, so it's really just balanced. It's a balance between the two, but when it fires, it definitely has a lot of force going down. So this is just capped off, and I have just a little bit of return here. And uh, the reason I wanted to do that is this will not go full stroke, but what will happen is it will go. Um, it will allow the system to return the piston down to the bottom. But also, what happens is that. Originally in my hydrogen videos, um, you see that the whole device actually lifts off the table, and that's because when this piston goes up and stops, because there's a there's a negative pressure here which wants to pull that piston down. When it goes up and tries to pull it back down, the rest of this unit wants to go somewhere. And now that I have this equal pressure on the top side, the, it wants to do that even more. So what I'm telling you is that this thing lifts off the table even further because of the reason that that piston wants to stop. So, I guess in theory, and this might be wrong, but in theory if you think about it, this piston moving up and slowing down is actually lifting the rest of this unit off the table. So in theory you could calculate how much this weighs, and actually it's like 70 pounds, 70 plus. I just have this, um, yeah right, like I can find it now. I just have this scale it's just a uh, spring scale and let me find it I found it I just have this spring scale alright same one I've been using in my other videos and it only goes up to uh, where's that down are we? 80 pounds uh, I was right 80 pounds there um, and I, I had a hard time lifting this unit with one hand I really need to take it off and set it on the floor and actually actually weigh it that way so I'll do that later for you guys just to show you what it is but um, 
I do have my coils wound. I'm not going to show them yet. They're in the house. But I got them wound. I'm ordering some epoxy resin to encapsulate them. But I do have them wound. They are formed. And um, I made two separate coils instead of one coil. And the reason I did that is because I want to be able to change the states between different stages of this piston moving up. I really don't have the ability to do a whole lot with that, but I thought if I'm going to wrap that much copper wire, probably about $75 worth of copper wire uh, and encapsulated in epoxy, I might as well make two separate coils. I can energize them at the same time and it gives me the exact same effects. Now I also got this neodymium ring magnet and I'll show you this. I actually got this for the top of the piston. I was going to work on making a uh, way to uh, use this magnet as a return. Make it so it travels through a coil. Alright, this is a 1 inch by 3 inch diameter magnet, neodymium. You can tell by the size of this thing. Um, it's very, 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 very strong. I'm not even going to play with it right now because I'll probably end up smashing my fingers. And uh, what I thought about is instead of using, and so guys were mentioning this on the forums, but to be honest, I was pondering these ideas a while back, probably about two weeks ago, probably around the same time they were thinking about it. Um, great minds think alike. Anyway, I uh, basically thought, why couldn't we just stick a neodymium magnet or a, or a, uh, a really nice big ferrite magnet? I've got some one inch by one inch by four inch magnets in that box as well and make a permanent magnetic field. I think there's some reasons why you don't want to make a permanent magnetic field, but for testing purposes it may focus the plasma ball that's in there that's uh, possibly doing the work here. So, um, I guess that's it. I'll do some calculations before I end this video. I'll put those on the end. Um, I have these capacitors very haggardly ha uh, connected and that was just because I, I don't have time right this minute to solder all these things and unsolder all things. Um, so I'll recalculate the amount of energy I'm putting into this system and we'll go from there. I did get some of these capacitors ordered. We'll see how long it takes to get here and then I will make a generic standard same capacitive bank and play with that because this is very difficult. But I'm using my resources here and it's all I got. So I'll set you back here and we'll fire this. And I've already been playing with this but I'll probably end up tagging that footage on here. But what I wanted to show you is what this thing looks like with the positive pressure. Basically I want I want you to see this thing jump off the table. So I'm going to charge this up to 350 volts and fire it. Here we go. I'm going to take this gauge off. It keeps flying around. Right, we'll do it again. I took some uh, still pictures, 60 frames a second. I'll add those onto this video as well. So, as you can tell, helium almost has more power than the hydrogen. Now, I still don't know exactly what's going on, but I can tell you, whatever it is, creating some serious force. Um, let me see if I can get you a, a, a camera angle across the table and we see, see if we can see those feet moving off the table. Alright, at the moment that's about the best I'm going to be able to do. This will give you an idea of the height that the weight of that piston is moving. It's not much, but quite a bit if you think about it. Um, yeah, so there you go. Alright, so I guess I'm going to go ahead and just rapid fire this thing and uh, see what kind of temperatures this thing builds up. Right now it's at 78 degrees. It actually rose pretty quick earlier when I did this. 
So uh, I'm going to turn this voltage up and uh, see what happens. Yep, there went my breaker. See if it was a fuse or what. Okay. I'll turn down this uh, voltage a little bit. I had it had it up pretty high. We're at 79 degrees. Look at my breaker again. That's just because I'm pulling too much current through my transformer. I'm trying to charge these capacitors really fast. I need to turn it down a little bit. 82 degrees. Tripped it again. So, as you can tell, I'm using helium. <laughs> so it's a non-explosive inert gas, and it's working. Now, uh, in the comments of the uh, PESN um, story that uh, Sterling Allen did, which I greatly appreciate, just uh, basically just sharing the information. It's good to get it out there. But uh, Bob, you know, mentioned that he mentioned somewhere that it can work on just about any gas, including air. It does work on air, but the, the, the air, and actually I'll do that, I'll empty this out and I'll try it with air, you can tell it's nowhere near the amount of power. Um, so I'm not quite sure what's going on. And we're only at 85 degrees. This thing is not hot. <laughs> 85 degrees, it's not hot. Any of the heat I really think is coming from the electrodes themselves. Well, let's keep going, shall we? Why not? Oh. Definitely a very orange plasma. I don't know how long I can stand here and show you this. My finger's getting tired. <clears throat> I am uh, working on some circuitry. Yeah, transformer's getting pretty hot. I am working on some circuitry to automatically fire this using the pulse fire box. I'm trying to set that up. It's really easy to do, but I'm trying to set up some other things where I can incorporate my coils. Um, by the way, we're at 93 degrees. So actually, it heated up, but then it kind of leveled out. Huh. Interesting. Why not? Let's do some more. One, two. I'll just fast forward through the footage on the on the replay. This thing's really moving around on me. That is a heavy son of a gun. Uh. Yeah, okay, why not? Ready? Ninety-six degrees on my temperature. Ninety-six degrees! Is it a thermal process? I don't know, plasma's hot. Um, so, I can't, I can't tell you. I really don't know. Um, I, I will tell you that I've been informed by a few people who have been ex 
dealing with this stuff for like years that a lot of people don't understand enough about plasma. I'm going to try to throw a theory out there. I don't know, most of you might dog me. But if you think about it, ionization brings the electrons to a higher orbit, which then in turn expands the molecule. In a closed space, when plasma forms, the ionization energy moves the electrons out on valence rings, everything expands. I really think that's what you're seeing here, and I really think that that's what um, Pap was doing. My theory. Anyway, I really do not, obviously, I, I really don't think this is a thermal process. Um, it's helium now. I'm not using hydrogen. So, I think if I uh, mix my cylinder up well enough with my inert gases, and I use my coil, um, I think that we'll get some some good results on keeping the heat down, still performing the work, and uh, pretty cool actually. Let me weigh this thing for you so you can see. Quickly while I'm taking this apart, I did want to mention something. I, I really think a lot of the heat that is coming from somewhere actually has to do with the electrical process. So the fact that I'm dumping a bunch of energy through a through a uh, a thin piece of metal, a quarter inch tungsten rod, and uh, probably a number eight wire. That alone, um, to me, is is creating a lot of the heat. Is actually in that part of the process, because these rods themselves are actually pretty hot, but the rest of the unit actually isn't. So, for instance, the whole entire unit is still only 77 degrees. If you can see that, okay but this rod itself and the point that the rod goes in check that out we're at a hundred degrees but the whole chamber is only at seven seven and I'm showing 96 here on the internal internal side right at this point on the inside so the gas itself is what I'm kind of reading the probe sticks out there within the gas so I'm actually reading about 96 on the gas, but the unit itself, not hot. That tells me if this was a combustion process, I think at the top of the chamber is a little thinner, it's a little bit hotter. But if this was a, a an actual thermal process, we'd be in the hundreds of degrees right now. So I, I just have a feeling it's not. Let's go ahead and uh, uh, weigh this thing. All right, the first thing you guys are going to do is laugh at my shoes, and I'm not wearing steel toes out in the shop. Uh, no, don't hate on me. I just got off work. It's freaking early in the morning. Deal with it. Oh, man, this is going to break my back. Oh, that's a two-man lift right there. All right, so can you see my scale? Put it on there wrong for you to see the scale. Let's get an accurate measurement reading because we haven't got one yet. I couldn't lift it myself. So can you see that? Just out of your view. Still out of view. There we go. All right, it's off the ground right there. So from my angle, it's 64. Let's see, it's one line after that, so 64. Uh, I guess that's. Mine is 70 pounds. Oh, man, that sucker's heavy. All right, so my personal thought about these rubber feet that I have on here were that maybe, possibly, the rubber feet were bouncing and lifting the unit off the table. So, you're about to learn with me if that's true or not. I haven't done this test. So let's give it a go. We'll see if we can make some noise, because this is going to be noisy. 
guarantee it. Well, by the way, we're still at 93 degrees on the gas, so the gas is holding steady. Well, they definitely lift off the table. So the answer is no. No, the feet do not play a role. It still jumps off the table. Um, what else was I going to do? I'll calculate the capacitance. I'll take some uh, readings on how much energy I'm using, just for an idea. Really quickly, I wanted to say, though, a lot of people are like, oh my, it's not over unity. Well, yeah, it's probably not. Um, I'm just testing some theories here, trying to learn a little, and trying to share a little knowledge with you guys. That's all I'm trying to do. So uh, it's going to take a lot more testing and research to actually get to that point. Now, one thing you need to remember is I'm not using any pre-ionization uh, energy. So I'm not using any of the rubidium or the uh, thorium or red phosphorus, anything like that. I'm not using any of those in my system currently. This is just purely voltage doing work um, or plasma doing work. But the, the, the electrical energy is actually doing the work here. Um, it's where it starts anyway. All right, so let's do some calculations. All right, so charging up to 350 volts, it drops down to 90 volts. That's with uh, the helium and the way I have it set up right now. So let's do some capacitance um, checking, and I'll let you know how many joules it is. Okay, so I've calculated what I've got. I've got a total of 14,320 microfarads, UF. Uh, the energy level is 877.1 joules. The end, I have 45.82 joules left over. So the total consumption is 831.28 joules of energy being used to do this. Um, like I said, there's no pre-ionization going on here, and I think that does play a big factor. Um, but other than that, that's really all I got to show you. I just wanted to give you this update. I hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, leave a comment. Definitely go over to the forums. If you're going to leave giant comments with good information in them, post them over at the forums. All the links that you need to know are in the description. So uh, there you go. Helium works just fine. So these noble gases are looking better every day. We just got to get it just right. Peace and love to you all. Have a good day, and God bless. Okay, See you. Um, this is helium. I've got my capacitors connected all a little bit funny, but uh, nonetheless, let's see what happens. Wow. That's, uh, <laughs> that's quite a bit of power. And the capacitance really isn't that high compared to what I was using before, so... See if we can hit that fan now, won't it? Same amount of power. Interesting. Yeah, that's a good thing. Seventy two degrees. Seventy three degrees. Seventy four degrees. Seventy five degrees. Seventy-eight degrees. Ninety-eight 
the electrodes are definitely warm. I think that's where 90% of my heat's coming from. Interesting. <clears throat> I'd like to get a uh, close up of the helium arc. That'll do you. So that's what the high voltage looks like. And we'll charge it here. Mirror fell. It's pretty cool looking. All right, I'm gonna try some bursts pictures here. See what we can do.